Okay, so not only was I in Scotland for a week after this release, it actually came out while I was on the way up there, so there was no chance I'd be on time for this breakdown, but hey ho. What's nice about that though is that I can refer to weapons that had their reveals after this one, and that's what I'll do to start us off. When the trailer first came out, I imagined that the weapon they showed was actually the base village version, sort of like the greatsword and a couple of others that they've shown. Looking back at it, that interpretation doesn't seem to make much sense given how different this hunting horn looks to the greatsword. What I now believe is that this weapon is from Doshiguma, and that's actually because of the longsword video, or more specifically the render they released for it. I'm going on the assumption that this armour is from Doshiguma because of how similar the fur looks to the monster, and then we can also see that the markings on the headpiece and the sheath are the same, which means that they're from the same place. We also see these markings on the hunting horn, plus I'd like to draw attention to some jagged metal on the armour for the longsword, the sheath, as well as the hunting horn itself. Not that any of this really adds up to anything, but it's fun to just figure out where everything comes from. Now let's finally talk about the trailer itself, which is fucking exciting as all hell. First up, very simple, but very nice, we see the return of pre-Rise style recitals. It looks like we've got a return to the 3rd and 4th gen and world version of playing notes and then reciting them in a separate recital mode. Right, so this trailer actually throws us right in at the deep end with a bunch of hype shit in the first proper shot of gameplay. I'll go over everything one by one, just bear with me because it gets a bit crazy. The first thing we're presented with is the reveal that the Rise style draw attack is making its return in Wilds. The reason I know this is because the visual effect of the note being played only appears midway through the swing in this shot, when normally, looking at world gameplay we can see that the note effect appears at the very start of the animation. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is exactly what it looks like. It's a side recital into a forward position, and that in and of itself isn't actually that exciting. It's an interesting change for sure, and it's a welcome one, but it does get more interesting when you consider that now the Hunting Horn can do echo attacks during songs, and it looks like this game's version of that is going to be much better integrated than Iceborne's version with the echo waves. What I mean by that is it seems to me that this mechanic takes place whenever you play any song. You'll see what I mean later. I also think that it's possible you might be able to choose the position you want to play a song in regardless of which direction you've done a recital. So in that sense it could be possible to do a side recital moving you to the side but instead of going forward, you go into the back position. And one more thing about these echo bursts on the song. I actually think that each one is the effect of a song playing, meaning that you can stack up songs like in World, but you can play them much quicker in the same recital and they each do a tick of damage. And now I get to talk about this encore. Oh my god. <laughs> You know what, I'll just play the Frontier clip. What you just saw was what I believe to be the series' first version of the Encore. To my knowledge, you can't really Encore in second generation games except for in Frontier. In that game, the Encore is just an extra pulse of the horn to give you the extended or upgraded effect of the song. And I believe that in Wilds, we've reached the logical next step of that combined with the previously known encores. And by that I mean there's a very quick flick of the weapon, which also then goes on to grant the secondary effect. So basically just a very nice upgrade to the song playing system that we all know and love. The final thing we see in this scene is some sort of finisher on the end of the encore. I have no idea what this is, it's completely new. What I do know is that it's very strange to see another attack following the end of an encore rather than an evade cancel. I love it. I love it. We've got a new kind of bubble, and it looks to me like it's some sort of mixture between the Bead of Resonance, or the Sonic Bloom from Rise Break, and the bubbles from Iceborne. And to me it looks like it's going to be better than both. Plus this dance is fucking hilarious, and I love it, and I'm going to do it all the time. Now we can actually see the bubbles doing things, and I find it very, very interesting to watch this play out. First off, it seems like just playing notes around the bubbles will get them to do ticks of damage to the monster if it's near enough. 
But then we see the hunter actually playing songs, and that deals even more damage. Also, a quick side note, it's fun to see the hunter actually go into a forward recital again, showing that from a fairly neutral stance you can go into that recital very quickly compared to world. Notice from the damage numbers that actually all of these bubbles are at some point contributing to the damage. And then at the end of this sequence we can see that six damage numbers appear from one attack. That's an insane amount of damage facilitated by these bubbles and the new Encore finisher. Kind of sweet that they still feel the need to include a section like this, reminding everyone that yes, the hunting horn is still capable of buffing other players. But one thing that's different about this version of it is that the fifth gen horn lent into the word support, which gave people who didn't play the weapon the idea that it was some sort of corner horning support class. Anyone who actually knows what's going on with the weapon knows that that's definitely not the case at all. I like that not only in the trailer but also on the website, it seems like the idea of prioritising buffing your teammates is long gone, with the teammate buffing function now being viewed more as a bonus than the point of the weapon. Also calling back to earlier, the visual effect of playing the song here to me quite strongly resembles the effect of using sound to attack the monster that we saw earlier on. This one's very easy, it's just Earthshaker from Rise, except this time you strum a load more to do a bunch more damage, and to me it's infinitely cooler, and Earthshaker was already super cool. There are a couple of things I wonder about this new version though, like will you be able to control how many strums you do before the finishing blow? And I also notice there's some sort of particle effect going into the bell of the hunting horn, which has to have some kind of meaning. Maybe it contributes to a special kind of song or other kind of buff, or it could just be some visual effect. This to me looks like it'll be the mounted finisher. Yes, it is using a sped up version of the tenderize animation from Iceborne, but I do think that this will be the attack that you finish off a mount with. That said, I am curious to see what mounting looks like in this game, and that's something that we'll get to see at Gamescom. Why are they using the bone horn now? Seriously though, it is quite weird that they're confirming the return of either Sonic Blast or Slide Beat, perhaps both because of how similar the animations are. And in order to do that, they're using a different horn to the one they've been using throughout the entire video. I'm pretty sure that isn't something they've been doing for any of the other weapons. I think this might be the only one that does that. Regardless, considering how similar those attack animations actually are to each other, perhaps it is both, and we've got some sort of uh, greatsword valor situation where we might be able to decide whether we do a lunge forward to do the attack or we do it in a closer range. And this, as with, I suppose, everything else in this trailer, is very exciting because it looks like a counter for the hunting horn. It's the equivalent to the greatsword's clash in the mouth attack. It's a focus attack, and it looks to be the biggest chunk of damage that the hunting horn will be able to deal in this game. I'm very excited to find out how these kinds of moves will actually work. And that's the end. Thanks a bunch if you stuck around this long, and uh, see you around, I guess.